Hello everyone, I'm Jensen, your digital content producer. It is Wednesday, August 19th, and I'm about to get you all caught up on today's top headlines. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about voting, plus a weird police chase that happened in Toledo, and a quick sneak peek at what's happening at the DNC tonight. But before we get into any of that, let me give you a quick update on the latest coronavirus data. So today there have been 958 new cases of coronavirus reported, that's compared to the 21 day average of 1,095. In that same time frame, there were 36 coronavirus related deaths. The 21 day average for the state is 23. Hospitalizations are hovering right around the average with 93 reported compared to 94 for the 21 day average. ICU admissions are up a bit though with 22 compared to the average of 15. And we're starting to get more information on what some of our area schools are choosing to do in the fall. So let's take a look at Bedford. Now, the Bedford District has already decided to let parents choose whether or not their kids should go back in person. And after filling out option forms, it seems that 58% of students will be going back in person and 42% will be learning from home. The district superintendent, Dr. Carl Schultz, said he strongly believes school leaders have put together a plan that both keeps students safe and still gives students a higher level of education. But they are ready to make necessary changes to adapt if at some point it's decided they're unable to maintain a safe environment for students and staff, including possible individual classroom quarantines and flexible school cancellation days due to extreme heat and mandatory mask requirements, or even large-scale COVID-19 breakouts that could force full virtual options district-wide. And we have that full letter available for you right now on our website, WTUL.com. And now here's a strange story from last night. A man is now in custody after leading police on a chase and crashing his car into a home in South Toledo. The TPD gang task force tried to stop 20-year-old Keon Bryant, who was driving on Dora and Bell. Bryant refused to stop, which led to a chase, during which police say he threw out a handgun and multiple magazines. Bryant then tried to get out of his car, but forgot to put it in park, causing the car to roll and crash into a home on the 1100 block of Steeplebush. Now, thankfully, police say there was minimal damage done to the home, and after a short foot chase, Bryant was put into custody. He's being charged with several felonies and was booked into the Lucas County Jail. And then just to our north in Lenawee County, a really heartbreaking story, actually. Law enforcement is asking for help to find the person responsible for severely abusing a pit bull mix puppy. The Adrian Police Department responded to a report of animal cruelty at McFarland Park on July 24th. The animal turned out to be an approximately 10-week-old tan and white puppy. The Lenawee County Humane Society accepted the pup since it was severely emaciated with evidence of abuse. The dog had fresh and healing wounds around the mouth, which led its caretakers to believe its muzzle had been taped shut. The puppy, named Brave, unfortunately passed away within 24 hours of receiving medical care, despite the efforts of the staff of the Lenawee County Humane Society. And anyone with information about this case should contact Crime Stoppers of Lenawee County at 517-266-6161. PETA is offering a reward of up to $5,000 for information leading to the arrest and conviction on animal cruelty charges of the person or people responsible for abusing Brave. And if you're ready to make some big changes in the Toledo community, now is your chance. Toledo City Council is looking for four fresh faces to fill empty seats on council after the original council members in those seats were arrested on bribery and extortion charges. If you're interested in applying, you have until August 21st to submit your application. All you have to do is send Judge Jack Puffenberger a letter of interest along with a resume and make sure you specify what district seat you're going for. So that would be district one, district four, or at large. We have the contact information that you need ready for you right now on our website, which is again, WTOL.com. And here's a bit of an update on voting this year as we inch closer to that November election. Now I suggested this yesterday, so I'm gonna call myself a bit of a trendsetter, but it seems like a lot of states are now jumping on board with ballot boxes with a number of states, including Arizona, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, pushing for even more to be installed that would enable ballots to reach election officials without even going through the mail. And this comes, as most of us know, during a time when mail delivery has been drastically slow and mail-in voting is expected to be at an all-time high. Now, a number of states have had drop boxes for years, including Ohio, and at this point, every county in the state will have one. But Secretary of State Frank LaRose has made it clear he doesn't plan on adding any additional boxes. He said he would need clearance from the Attorney General to set up more than what we already have. And President Donald Trump has already voiced criticism of these drop boxes, tweeting out, so who's going to collect the ballots and what might be done to them prior to tabulation? A rigged election? So bad for our country. 
But again, these boxes are nothing new and typical security measures for them include video surveillance, locks, tamper resistant seals, and chain of custody logs that are updated every time ballots are collected. And a few dates I'm going to keep reminding you of, October 5th is the deadline to register to vote and early voting kicks off the next day, October 6th, and continues through November 2nd. And tonight is the third night of the Democratic National Convention, bringing in some big speakers to join in on the virtual event. Former President Barack Obama, who picked the current presumptive Democratic nominee Joe Biden as his running mate a dozen years ago, has top billing for the event. But before we hear from him, Senator Kamala Harris will make her first primetime appearance as Biden's running mate. Plus, America will hear from Hillary Clinton, the first female presidential nominee of any major party and President Trump's opponent during the last election as you may remember. If you don't want to watch, don't worry. We have the RNC coming up on Monday. We'll have coverage of that. But if you do want to watch, we have it streaming on our website tonight, WTOL.com, and on our Facebook page from 9 to 11 p.m. So check that out. But that is all I have for you today for more of your top headlines. You can watch us nightly live on Channel 11 at 5, 6, and 11. And if you want more updates from me, you can go ahead and like this video. Make sure you subscribe. You know you want to. You'll get an alert to your phone whenever I pop on here. But with all of that in mind, I hope you have a happy Wednesday.